We're now gonna stitch the shoulders together. What I have done here is I have placed the back right side up and I've put the two front pieces right side down and aligned the shoulders. You'll notice when you align them that they are not quite the same lengths. Um, they, especially for the ladies, will differ by the seam allowance just here. So start by lining up the outside of the shoulder first and clip or pin along. And then um, I like to, because I really want an, a garment like this, to have all of my seam allowances sit open at the edges um, so that it doesn't create any extra bulk. Um, I like to clip or pin both sides of the seam allowance and then um, go uh, over onto here last. Uh, don't stretch or pull it, uh, but what you will find is that there will be a little bit that sticks out like that. That's exactly what's supposed to happen because when you stitch along using a half inch seam allowance, it will come out precisely on there. And then when you open it, you will have a nice smooth line versus it doing that. So it'll be a nice smooth line along like that. So if you um, clip or pin along your shoulders and then stitch those using a half inch seam allowance, You want to open the seam out and press the seam open and if you are doing the um, shoulder tabs this is where you then attach them so i have um i have attached um, this is my back these are my front and you can see i've got my my front yokes there and i've got my back yoke here and i have placed my shoulder tab so that it is directly over the seam line between the front and the back of the garment and I'm I don't mind about this bit I'm this won't get caught when we attach the collar it will sit close to the collar but not inside the seam allowance we'll just leave that loose for now but um, we want to stitch along the um, armhole edge here so that the um, uh, the the shoulder flap what's it called tab <laughs> shoulder tab is attached at the shoulder not at the neckline and then you if you want to and you've already done a buttonhole you could put your button there I'm not going to do a buttonhole what I'm going to do is just stitch my button straight on there I don't want a buttonhole there to be able to open it but if you did want a hole to open it make sure you've done your buttonhole before you attach it it's a lot easier and then I'm going to attach all my buttons at the end but if you want to you could put your button on there now I really wouldn't recommend that because it makes it difficult when you do the collar just to have more bulk of a button sitting there. So for now, stitch your shoulders together between the front and the back. And if you are doing the shoulder tabs, um, uh, stitch both of them on on the armhole edge there. And you want to use about a quarter inch seam allowance um, to attach these so that it is um, stitched on within the seam allowance for what we'll do later so you can't see them being attached. Um, but for your shoulders, use the normal half inch seam allowance. Once we've stitched our shoulder seam, we're then going to stitch our side seam. I want to show you this first um, so you can see exactly what I mean about this little triangle here. So see how this little bit here is sticking out over the edge. So there's a little pointy bit sticking out because I've aligned the shoulder seam from the sleeve edge across through to the neckline. But when I stitch using a half inch seam allowance, the stitch line comes out exactly at the kind of V in between those points. And then when I open it up, we get a really nice smooth edge there. So that's why we do it that way. I don't know what I've got attached. I've got things attached. I've got things joining me. I'll cut that off in a minute. Um, uh, then um, uh, keeping your front and your back right sides together, uh, pin from the armhole downwards. Now if you have a fabric that has a little bit of stretch in it, I know it's not recommended, but if you have, like me, purchased something online and you didn't know and then you want to use it anyway and just try it, wouldn't recommend it. But if you do, <laughs> um, um, clip it or pin it together and then I would recommend you actually hang this for a couple of hours just to check that one isn't going to stretch more than the other. If it's um, uh, some fabrics you might want to hang for a day, um, so others a couple of hours is fine, but clip it from the top downwards, not from the bottom upwards in case one piece of the fabric has stretched or 
kind of rested into itself more than the other because otherwise you'll end up with you know one hemline being longer than the other and it's a lot easier to just come along and chop it off at the hemline than it is to try and work out a new armhole that's nice and neat so always start from the top and go downwards and if you need to um, clip it together and then hang it for a day or two or even baste it together and then hang it and then come back and stitch it later. So if you um, do that for both of your side seams from the armholes downwards. So if you're gonna if you're doing the belt loop, what you'll have is a um, is a rectangular piece of fabric. Um, it's a big, long, thin rectangle, and um, what you want to do is fold it wrong sides together so that it is. Um, if you can see that, oh, this fabric. There we go, you can see I've got a fold line in the middle because I folded it wrong sides together and then I've pressed it. And then what I want to do here, if you can see that, is once I've got it so that it's um, right sides out, wrong sides together, I'm going to open it back out again and I'm going to fold the raw edges into that middle line. So see that there, I folded that into the centre fold line and then the other side I'm going to fold in as well. So. Come on, focus. Come on. I hope you can see that anyway. I've oh, it's not focusing. Um, I folded those two raw edges into the into the middle there. Um, so the raw edges are in the middle, and then I'm folding it back again on that half line. So it is now um, it is now one quarter of the width that it was. Um, so you've got your raw edges folded into the middle. And then I folded it. Ah, come on. Roy just folded into the middle. Come on. It's such a tiny little bit of fabric. Roy just folded into the middle and then folded back on itself so that it's um, a, a quarter wide of what it was. Um, then what I want to do is I'm going to stitch down the each fold line to hold it in place. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and also my side seams. Um, but the other thing you're going to need to know and see is where the um, where the uh, belt loops are going to go. Now on your front pattern piece, you will see this little rectangle and that's a marking for one of the belt loops. And all of the belt loops placements are marked like that. We have marked them where we found in testing people wanted them the most. But this is just a guide. You want to do it for your body and what fits you. So once you've done your side seams, don't come back and just immediately mark this. Go to the mirror, try it on and get a belt or a dressing gown cord or something so that you can then tie it around your waist where you want, if you're doing the belt, where you want the belt to, do, to go and then mark either side of that so that you can see how far down from the shoulders or how far down from the waist you want that to be. Because I am quite short and um, I find that this, even though... Um, I don't need to adjust for height for this particular, sometimes I do, but for this particular pattern, I find my torso length is actually okay. Uh, because I'm quite short, I still find this is in the wrong place for me. Even though it works for nearly all of our testers, everybody's body is different. So depending on the length of your torso and your height and whether you prefer to tie things around your natural waist or a bit lower, this is this may or may not be in the right place. So, um, do your side seams and then put it on and get a dressing gown cord or a belt or something and tie it around your middle and just check whether that is centered over the right place or not um, and then um, uh, stitch your actual belt loop um, and then I'll show you how we cut it up and how we actually then apply it. Once you've got your finished belt loop um, and it's all stitched down either side and you've got all the bits tucked in, then you need to cut them into the right size sections. So uh, I am aiming to have them about three and a half inches long. You may um, only be doing either the belt loops or the sleeve tab loops or one or the other. So you won't necessarily have to cut quite as many as I'm going to use, but I'm, I've cut five out of my um, sleeve loop my belt loop <laughs> my loop my loop my loop I've cut about five out of 
no, oh my goodness, I have cut five out of them. So here we go, it's ready. Uh, what I need to do now is I'm gonna tuck these raw edges under. I'm tucking them under um, by about half an inch. Um, so, and it's really thick and quite hard to do this. So I don't know if you can see, oh, there we go, if I do that, you can see that. So I've just folded the edges under like so, and I'm gonna squish them down, and then I'm gonna place them on the fabric, and I'll do this on the pattern piece. So see my little loop marking here? Let's say I've decided I want it exactly where that loop marking is. I would place it over there like so. Oh my goodness, squish down. There we go. Oh, squish over there like that so that it's flat and then I'm going to stitch across the top of the loop and across the bottom of the loop and I'm going to go back and forwards a few times to give it a really make it really secure if like me you've got quite thick fabric there and you're like oh my gosh that's just impossible I uh, how ridiculous I'm never going to do this there's a couple of tips I've got for you one is that you could um, hand sew it on you don't have to machine sew it um, I have, when I've done this in the past, used a really thick needle and uh, one of those finger protector things that so doesn't hurt. Um, and I've started underneath so that you can't see the knot, come up through and then down and through and down and through and down through and down like that to attach it on really tightly. And that has helped. The other thing that I do, which is a little bit naughty, is I uh, fold the edges over like that. I place it down on a, um, on a clean surface. I've got a, a piece of... Uh, board that I use outside or you could just use the concrete or something and have um, a tea towel underneath and then I put a tea towel over the top and then I give it a light bang with a hammer either end and what it does is it breaks the fibers in the fabric and it squishes it down so that it stays like that and it does two things firstly this fold stays flapped in and secondly it's a lot thinner it kind of squashes it and compresses it down which makes it a lot easier to put it on here like this pin it down and be able to machine stitch over. A third tip, if none of those work uh, and you want to do it by machine, not by hand, um, is place a pin at the top and at the bottom of where you want the loop to go and don't actually pin this on yet. Get this lined up on your machine and then when it's on your machine, place the end on like this, up, butt it up to where you want the where you've got the pin, put your presser foot down, start stitching, and carefully remove the pin before you go too close to it. And then do the same thing with the other end to fold um, oh, fold that under um, and stitch that and making sure they're flat, obviously. Um, and that way um, uh, you don't have to try and pin this to the garment, which I know it can be quite tricky to pin it. So there we go, and I will show you. I've stitched some on already, so you can see it on. Oh no, there's fluff on my coat. Um, uh, there we go, so I've stitched that um, on there like that, so you can see the lines. It is nearly flat, it's not entirely actually, um, but it's nearly flat, and I have checked um, that the that is the right width there. I've not made it too small as, as per the pattern piece to make sure that then the belt will fit through. So I've got my um, oversleeve and my undersleeve here. Um, as you can see, I'm doing my oversleeve in the faux leather and my undersleeve in the wool. I'm really excited about that. Um, and I have lined it up from the, the bottom going upwards so that there is a little uh, V here. And depending on the size that you're doing will depend on how kind of sharp that V is. So don't be phased if your V looks slightly different to mine. This is just the seam allowance bit. And all it is showing you is that we're going to stitch using a half inch seam allowance and it should start exactly where that, um, that tip of that V is. Um, if your seam allowance um, uh, is over here somewhere or over here when you measure your half inch to do your seam allowance, um, don't worry. It just means either you've cut something um, not quite as accurately or it's not lined up or something stretched. So um, uh, make sure to use a half inch seam allowance. Don't adjust it to where the V is, um, but just that that's kind of your little checkpoint to know that everything is all lined up and matches perfectly. So we're gonna stitch from there, coming all the way down, all the way down, all the way down to exactly one inch below the top of 
that vent there. Now you might notice depending on your size that this vent might be on a diagonal or it might be straight or it might be a mix of both depending on what size you're doing. Again, don't worry, just follow the seam allowance down um, using half inch seam allowance and then stop exactly one inch below the top of that vent there and uh, make sure if you've done your sleeve tab not to get it all um, in the middle of that. We wanna keep your sleeve tab well out of the way. Um, and I'm gonna, I obviously haven't stitched mine yet, but I'm gonna do that in a minute. So mine would be like that. And probably what I'll do is just clip it down here somewhere so that it's out of the way. So this is the back of my garment now. Um, and you can see this is my over sleeve, which is the large leather one. And this is my um, under sleeve, which is the, um, the one I'm doing in the wool blend. And what I've done is I've um, I've stitched it, and you can see here I've got my little um, sticky up bit here that was my was my V before I opened it up, and then I have opened the um, the seam here and I've pressed it flat. Now, if like me you're using something which won't iron very well, like this faux leather, um, what you what I have obviously you, you know follow the whatever the suggestion, suggestions are of that fabric company. Um, but what I've done for mine is I've um, pressed it with my fingers as hard as I could to re like really open, whoopsie daisy, sorry, open the seam and hold it down. And then I've place, placed a, um, a relatively thin kind of quilting cotton um, level tea towel over the top. And then I've um, pressed it over the top of that so that then I don't burn this faux leather. Um, but it'll still press and then I've opened the seam down and this is oh I wish this wasn't black here we go so you can see that so I've opened it all the way out and I've pressed it even though we've only stitched to one inch below here um, I've opened it all the way to the opened the I've carried on the pressing and opened it out all the way to the very bottom of the sleeve vent then what I want to do is come here and I'm going to snap so that I'm going to cut for a, straight along this line, nearly up to my seam, not into my seam, but as close to it as I can get, so that this part of the seam allowance and this part are separate. I'm not doing it on my under sleeve. I'm only doing it on my over sleeve. That you will know you've got the right one because your over sleeve is much bigger than your under sleeve. Your under sleeve is narrow. Your over sleeve is wide. So I'm going to cut this here. And I'm going to snip it as far up as I can get to the seam allowance there, <clears throat> to the seam I meant, without actually snipping into it. And then I'm going to keep this opened out flat, and I, but I'm going to close this one over. So I've opened this up so that it is now pressed over the top of there. So I'll just hold this up so you can see it. This seam allowance here is still open, whereas um, the for the oversleeve I have opened it out over here and you can see my stitching for where I've stitched down that extra one inch. Um, so I'm going to leave that like that there and then the next part is I need to measure up one and a half inches and we're going to fold the hem of the sleeve up this one and a half inches to create a memory hem. Now if you know you've got longer or shorter arms and you have already identified in your muslin that your sleeve needs to be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, um, you might vary this amount, but to do it exactly as per the pattern, it's one and a half inches. So for each of these pieces, I'm going to fold it up one and a half inches and then I'm going to press this um, using my iron and I will check all the way along here that that is one and a half inches. And I'm going to press it and then I'm going to do the same on the other half of the sleeve here. So that's one and a half inches as well. And I'm going to press all of it, press, 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 so that it makes a fold line along here when you unpin it. So if you go away now and do that, press that up um, so that it's got a fold line on it. Right, I've now folded that up. So if I unfold it, you can see there's a line um, pressed into it. And the same with this side, there's a line there. So that you can see all of this, seam allowance, that's got the flap under there and it's just folded up. I've not I've not tried to tuck all of this in yet. We'll do all of that when we do the actual stitching of the vent, but it's just all folded over where it needs to sit for now. A little hack that I'm going to do on my 
um, leopard print coat is I'm going to um, stitch the under sleeve and over sleeve with no uh, vent at the bottom of the sleeve. So um, with a vent, it means that the, the coat has this little flap that as you put your hand into the coat opens up and then can kind of just gently, you know, fold over your arm uh, once your arm's in it. So by taking away that sleeve vent that can open up, the coat's going to stay closed as my hand goes into it, which means my hand, I am going to have to kind of slightly push my hand through. It is big enough to get a hand through, but not if you've got like a thick glove on, for example. But this is not a coat that I'm going to wear thick gloves with. Um, it's just to pop on over some jeans and a white t-shirt. We're on the school run, so um, which is <laughs> a fun kind of coat to wear on the school run, but one I'm going to wear on the school run all the same. Um, so I'm quite happy to take out the vents, and this is a great thing if you're a beginner to do, because the sleeve vents can be quite tricky. So to do that, I'm going to take my under sleeve and over sleeve pattern pieces, the fabric ones, not the lining, and um, see these two little sticky out pieces? We just want to get rid of them. That's all we do. So I am going to fold um, that back and I will take, um, I've already measured this, but um, if I look at how wide this vent is here, this one's exactly one inch. It's going to vary by size, so do check it for your size. And I'm going to fold that back and I just want to make sure that that line stays parallel because then this stays a straight line all the way down that edge. And then the same with this one. I measured it, folded it over and then checked that that was the same all the way down. So um, these sleeves, um, if I cut out my under and over sleeve using exactly that, that will give me a straight sleeve edge um, and uh, there'll be no vent in it. If you're not sure if your hand is going to fit through, maybe you've got um, large hands or you like wearing gloves or something, I don't know, cut it out um, uh, with it open and you can always measure this and cut it off later once you've basted the edges together and check that you can get your hand through it. So that is that, it's a nice little hack for you. Now the next bit is we're going to do the the seam line that joins these two sides. So we're gonna flip it over and put it right sides to right sides. So this is <clears throat> right side to right side and i um, gonna clip from the top all the way down to the bottom but when I get to the bottom I want to unfold this this flap that I just did because I want to stitch it all the way to the bottom. Do not unpress this though. We still want to see that, that fold line running across there because we will use that later. That's actually for later in the program pro later in the process, not for right now. For right now, uh, we're gonna stitch um, all the way down um, the seam here using a half inch seam allowance, just like normal. So there we go. I've I've pinned that and I'm gonna stitch from the top half an inch all the way down here and through my memory hem. This is what this is called when you um, make a fold in something, not to use it straight away, but just to have it um, in, the, it's called, in the memory of the fabric. So that is all like that. And um, if you have done your um, sleeve tab, just make sure to get that out of the way. You, it should be attached here in this seam, but you don't want to accidentally have it come straight back through the seam or get caught in your seam. So do that for both sleeves now. So once you've stitched that um, uh, the seam down here, what I highly recommend you do is um, as much as you can press that seam allowance there open um, um, for underneath the arm. It's quite hard though because it's quite a small little space. So if you can't get it open, don't worry about it, but do open the bottom part and then fold it back up over that memory um, that memory hem that we pressed in and just clip or pin it in place so that you don't lose that fold because we will need that later and it's quite tricky to refold that in once it's all um, attached to the garment so just fold that up for now. So I just want to show you if you're following the no sleeve vent option that it's exactly the same you've got your um, seam here that you um, stitched earlier except there's no vent we've chopped that off Still, still fold in your memory hem and still stitch all the way down um, for the underarm seam using a half inch seam allowance. So it's exactly the same if you're following that little hack.